I'm Lauren Sega, Manager of Communications for Homeport, a nonprofit affordable housing developer in Central Ohio. We're in one of the fastest growing areas in the country, and while we've seen the growth, we've felt the pains that come along with it, especially when it comes to housing all of us and our incoming neighbors. Each month, we're interviewing local experts on the issues, the barriers, and the solutions around housing and development, hoping to shed some light on how we got where we are and what we can do to create a future that houses everyone. This is Level With Us. There's a new Central Ohio Transit Authority, or CODA, levy coming up on the November ballot this year that, if passed, will transform Central Ohio's transportation network. Among other things, the levy would enable CODA to expand their CODA Plus service, build out five bus rapid transit lanes along strategic corridors, and construct 500 miles of bikeways and sidewalks. CODA is funded primarily by a 0.5% county sales tax, and the ballot item would double that to 1%. This is expected to raise $6 billion through 2025 and will demonstrate public support of enhancing the region's transportation network, enabling CODA to secure an additional $650 million in federal funding. Here on Level With Us today is Asleen Rodriguez, Senior Director of Regional Strategic Partnerships at CODA, as well as Gail Saunders of the Link Us Engagement Team. Together, they share more about Link Us, how the city, county, and CODA have collaborated to bring it to life, and what it could accomplish if voters give it their support. Let's lay the foundation. More CODA service, more bikeways, more sidewalks, and more opportunity. This is Gail Saunders. And so when you think about expanding uh, services for CODA, it really can open up opportunity in so many different ways. And then the other big piece is people are getting more sidewalks. And so I think that's important. Asleen? Yeah, I mean, I think the big takeaway is the freedom to move, right? And this is Asleen Rodriguez. Um, This is about choice and connecting communities. So um, to give you a more tangible, it's about how people use public transit, how they use sidewalks and trails and bike paths, but it's truly about giving people accessibility. Access is really key here. Um, And knowing that we need to have the 14th largest transit, so we're the 14th largest city, and we need to have transit that matches that. By 2050, our region will have a million more people. If everything remains the same, that's a million more single occupancy vehicles joining us on our morning commutes. It's also a million more people vying for housing in a tightening rental and home buyer market. As the region grapples with our current housing shortage and prepares for this future, Link Us is working in tandem with efforts like Zone In, which we cover in episode 5, to spur faster housing development and couple it with the transit options needed to support a denser region. Housing is so critical to this. Twin Cities is a great example. Um, They were able to do 30% of their development on 3% of their land, right? So welcoming so many people on such small property and the impact of that, but transit was the driver um, sort of behind that. And so that was what the impact of transit can do but housing has to be alongside us and it has to be equitable. We can't build for one subset of our community. We have to build for all who are gonna want to live along those corridors. I say this a lot and I'll say it and continue to say it because it's true. Transit and housing are hand in glove, right? Um, Where there is adequate transit, there is adequate housing ideally, right? But there has to be the right group of folks who are thinking about it because this is in it, this initiative and any initiative that's quite frankly happening in a lot of major cities where they're looking at expanding their transit, they're looking at housing. How do we allow people to stay, right? And create space for folks to stay in their community, but also invite new folks in an affordable way. 
right? Mm -hmm. Giving the diversity of housing, it's what's going to be critical to allowing people to live, work, and play in the same community. Um, we talk a lot about zip codes and area codes for, um, you know, what that means in terms of social determinants for someone, but ideally when you're building great transit and great housing, you can live anywhere, right? You're not, you're not locked into, well, this is where I can afford. Ideally, you're allowing everybody to have access to, the, to where they want to live for whatever reason that doesn't just, is like, I can't afford that. And when you think about um, Central Ohio and a housing affordability in Central Ohio, we're already, what, 200,000 homes behind in terms of what we need in this city. And so when you think about the collaboration of Morpsey and CODA and the city of Columbus and Franklin County to really think about how we're building transit differently so that we're not displacing people, so that we're really focused on making sure that we are thinking about housing and all these other pieces and parts that are coming together. Zone in, for example, mm -hmm. that's going to allow the transit community and the work in transit for infrastructure to build differently. Those things matter. And so when you think about how all of the entities mm -hmm. are coming together to make sure housing is part of this initiative, it really is going to be a game changer for uh, Central Ohio. Yeah, and I'll just add that like that's really critical. CODA couldn't do this alone. This had to have been a partnership, um, and it and the partnership is so um, important because it impacts like how policies are done, right? So the city and the county and Morpsey are critical partners in uh, in this space, right? Each each partner sort of leaning in in the area that they can impact. And that's so important because, you know, CODA's got to focus on um, transit and mobility. And we've got to have other partners saying, well, then I could take this and I could take this piece. But like collectively, we have to keep an eye on all of it. Mm -hmm. Right. We have to make sure that there's ex uh, equitable transit oriented development, which is your housing, your businesses, you know, the jobs that are in the community. And then you've got to think about, OK, how are people going to move and who's building that infrastructure? So it's a collective effort that I think is really important. And now it's time to level up. As it stands, Columbus and Central Ohio is highly car dependent. 81% of residents drive alone on their commutes, to their health appointments, to the grocery store. How is a mindset shifted from one that thinks immediately of grabbing the car keys to one that is checking the transit app for the next bus? If you don't give people options, they don't have the option to shift their mind, right? So putting a uh, bus rapid transit line in front of somebody, just that alone makes them think like, I'm in traffic and that's going past me and the frequency is every 10 minutes and I don't want to uh, drive if I don't have to, right? I'd rather uh, take the extra minute to listen to a podcast or read. And you might listen to a book on tape and I, I always say book on tape, but like that's not a thing. Uh, you might listen to an audio book, or you might be, um, or you might uh, listen to a podcast in your car when you're by yourself. But are you really listening? Right? Are you because you've got to pay attention to the traffic around you? Like I, I want to sit back and enjoy those. Passenger uh, princess. For yes, everybody. that's exactly <laughs> right. I want to be a passenger princess. My best friend just made. She's a hand lettering artist, and she just made this sticker that was like forever passenger princess. Like, um, and you know, I was just talking to Gail's intern, mm -hmm. who is going off to college, and she isn't driving, mm -hmm. right? And we were talking about yes. her commute to school. Right. And her commute to school is not easy because she opted to a high school that's not a neighborhood high school to where she lives. And so that impacted that parent. Yes. So now that parent has to think about, okay, I've got to take my child to um, school, and I've got to take my child to, uh, and then i got to get myself to work, right? We're seeing young folks not get their driver's license at 16, 
what does that mean to them to have a transit system that gives them a little bit more freedom, right? Uh, gives a parent a little bit more That's freedom right. too, That's right? right. You know, exactly I, right. I'm a parent now and I'm thinking, <laughs> Oh my gosh! I'm gonna cargo him around all the way until <laughs> and, like yeah. And it's not only about the transit; those who are in cars. But when you think about uh, the cyclists, we have Columbus is becoming a more bike-centric community as well. And so when you think about what Coda is doing and the infrastructure, building more uh, bike lanes and bike paths, safe bike paths, mm -hmm. and so that makes a difference as well. So really thinking about how people in all, with all types of mobility can get around more efficiently, more quickly, and in a safe way as well is what this is all about. When you think about a million more people by 2030 in mm -hmm. central Ohio, we cannot have a million more cars on the road. And so when you think about changing the mindset mm -hmm. of people. I think uh, get stuck in traffic in Atlanta, uh, Chicago, people that, that may not have uh, thought about that, that could really impact us here. I think that's gonna help change the mindset of people as well. Mm -hmm. And then like one other thing is, you know, I think about um, mindset set mm -hmm. shift and some people may not need it now but life circumstances can change your needs, right? Um, you might uh, need ankle surgery, and maybe it's a short term. I need Coda Plus, which is our on-demand system, and it's point to point, right? Because it's my driver's foot, and I, and I can't use that, right? So in some cases, it might be out of necessity, right? My need has changed. My want has changed. In some cases, it might be the impact to your financial stability, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that in some cases it's going to be inviting people to change their mindset. In some cases it's going to be circumstantial changes. Um, and for some folks it's going to be environmental, mm -hmm. right? They want to reduce their footprint and are doing their small part. And if everybody chooses to do their small part, right, you might go from a two-car household to a one-car car household. But you wouldn't have done it if you didn't have the option of transit, right? The option of transit allows you. And then the final thought there is um, ideally when we're building these bus rapid transit corridors, we're building a life where you can kind of do it in that area, ideally. Okay. That you're building these housing facilities that people can move into their apartment and maybe they have a dog and they take their dog to doggy daycare that's just a block away and their job is on that line, right? So can we do the continuum of your life on public transit? Grocery store, doctors, dry cleaners, all daycare. of that. Daycare. Daycare, mm -hmm. all of that, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I will say to you, most people don't want to spend a ton of time in their car, right? They don't want to be traveling mm -hmm. around. Because they have a car, it gives them more options in some cases. But that's because sometimes the options aren't in, in, in the front of them, right. Right? right? Aren't accessible by where they live. Mm -hmm. And so ideally, when you're building this transit, you're building accessibility and the things that allow people to live so that they can say like, I don't actually need a car. Like everything I need is right mm -hmm. where I live, right. on the transit line. Asleen says a more robust bus network with more frequent service may also change habits. Right now, if you just miss the bus, you could be waiting an hour for the next one. If you're on a schedule, you're not waiting that hour. Under Link Us, that hour would be 10 minutes. In our current system, we have different uh, times in which our vehicles, depending on the line, you know, could be 15, it could be 30, it could be 60 minute frequency. Mm -hmm. But when you know that it's always going to be 10 minutes, yes. you're like, okay, I just saw the last bus roll out. I know the next vehicle is going to be there in 10 minutes. And it's not maybe 10 minutes, it's exactly 10 minutes, because bus rapid transit will have light prioritization, meaning lights will stay green longer as the bus approaches, keeping buses on schedule. But when is all this going to happen? All of this is preparing for a future, a future in the year 2050, 25 years down the line. 
but it's not going to take that long to see the return on investment for voters. In fact, changes will begin as early as next year if the Linkus initiative is approved. Each of them is going to be on a different timeline. So, for example, the um, Coda Plus, our on-demand, that could happen as quickly as 2025. Um, some of our expanded time in terms of our current frequency um, and our current fixed route, that could happen in 2025. The uh, bus rapid corridor is estimated the West Broad is the first corridor to open. So there's West Broad, East Main, and the Northwest uh, Corridor. There are two more to be identified. But the first one and that's furthest in development is West Broad. And ideally, in November, um, should the voters decide to pass this, we would be able to open in 2028, ideally. Now, this is an estimated timeline based on construction, but estimated timelines tell us 2028, you're going to see the first that's bus right. rapid so transit. That's right. So that's really a short time when you think about that. Uh, mm -hmm. They would be operational in 2028, mm -hmm. and then the others will come along uh, each year after. Ideally, the, the cadence of it would be the next year with the next corridor would open, the next year the first phase of um, the Northwest Corridor, and so on. So that folks in the community can see, okay, I can see the impact of my dollars, mm -hmm. right? That cord. I might not live on West Broad, but I can see the impact because it's opened up, and I know that that money went somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's what taxpayers want to see. Ideally, they want to. In some cases, they want to see that tangible result. Mm -hmm. And the same is true with sidewalks and bikeways along the same uh, timeline. And so, right now, there are about 130 projects that have already been identified by community and by input. And so, those would come online. You would begin to see some of those sidewalks enhancements build out as early as 2025, 2026. If you want to learn more about Link Us, they'll come talk to you and answer all your questions. I know this because they came to the Homeport offices and gave us a whole presentation followed by a Q&A. We are working with community to help the community understand the benefits yeah. of more coda service, more sidewalks, more bikeways. And so we're out in the community. If any of your listeners would like uh, for us to come and speak with them, uh, just go to linkuscolumbus.com and there's uh, information there uh, to get in touch with us. But we really believe this the time is now mm -hmm. and it's an important opportunity for us to think beyond today and think about Columbus and Central Ohio in the future and what this really can mean to bring in more opportunity to our community. As a note for voters who will be looking for this on their November ballot, this will appear as a CODA levy, not as Link Us. More information on the initiative will be in the show notes. Level With Us is brought to you by Homeport and is recorded, mixed, and edited by Lauren Sega. All sources are in the show notes. Homeport creates strong communities by developing quality, affordable homes on a cornerstone of dignity, security, and opportunity. To learn more, or if you'd like to support our mission, visit us at homeportohio.org.